Bong, I'm back. If you didn't see one, go see one. You should. So here we are. What are we going to do here? We got a good amount of nylon picks to try out here. So we're going to go through here. Um, we will try to compare them via, let's say, their, uh, their gauge. So we're going to begin right here with a brain pick. Um, this is a snarling dog's brain, and this is one of the older ones, which I love, and consequently, maybe it's just in my head, but I don't like, I don't use the 73s that I used forever because they feel so different. So this is an older 53. Um, so we're going to try the uh, .53 snarling dog pick. We're going to compare that with a Dunlop .53 pick. picks like this it's uh certain passages like uh, playing like faster where you gotta the the diddle it the diddle it your the diddle it gets it's a little flubby so you gotta get a little more into it which is not good so this one I would say is it does have a good tone like for a beginner wanting to play quietly or get a feel okay but I'm gonna go ahead and discard that one so we're gonna go ahead and discard that for the time being but we're going to go and talk about the Jim Dunlop 0.53 here, which is a whole different animal. So this 0.53 is a little stiffer. It's got quite the memory. Um, it's, uh, uh, okay, I gave it away. Yep, I use one of these. This is one of my own personals. Um, this is always in my banjo. You got me. Now, when I was saying how much I liked in the last video, the Tortex, this is why I don't have a Tortex. And uh, this is a .53, so remember I said if the Tortex was a .53, it'd be amazing. Well, this is that. And it is in like a straight, um, it is their midi, or like what I call like Jim Dunlop's older nylon, their snappier nylon and this. <laughs> This has a good tone. You, you, can do, you can rake with it a little bit. So you can get a little raking action down. So that raking action, um, on some picks, when you get a little heavier, you get like a flubby... A little sound that despite your best efforts or perfect uh, hand placement on the chords, um, you're going to get like a little bit of a tone, like this harder kind of tone. Not necessarily like a, it's just different. It's like a different kind of tone, like a glassier tone. Um, and that's all well and good. However, uh, say like in the summertime, like when you're playing in a heated environment, your hands are hotter. I go ahead and I run one of these as well. And this is the same pick, but this is the 0.67 millimeter. So this is a little thicker. And uh, remember I showed you that glow pick? The glow pick, which I did not like so much, led me here. And I tried this just for for poops and laughs. And uh, for poops and laughs, I was like, uh, okay, I'm going to probably think this is like the glow pick. But this is nothing like that glow pick. Even though it's the same mold, um, it... <laughs> Thank you. 
So say it's like the fall and I'm playing outdoors, this pick will stay nice and stiff and have the perfect action. Or if I'm recording and I want a little softer tone, which I am going to be recording, and you wonder why I don't do so many more songs, I'm doing an album I've been working on. And that's why I'm not doing songs on YouTube, because I'm going to put the album on YouTube with some neat uh, footage and fun things. So I don't want to spoil it and, you know, go over like old songs or like these songs, like repost them. So that's why I just do like snippets and stuff. But in the future here, I'm going to be doing more songs and uh, very constructed like uh, stuff here. I'm a little bit of dad gad guitar and then a lot of tenor banjo, which is my main lap dog here. Um, so that 0.67, that right there is going to be one where I have to say almost if you're going to choose to have a pick, like let that be your pick. And then while we're in the 0.6 range, let's go ahead and uh, compare another two picks here. And like those two comparisons we just did there, um, as a comparison of uh, the Jim Dunlop not nylon versus the uh, the brain. Obviously, this one's a go-to, and everybody that plays tenor banjo or plectrum should run one of these. Everyone, because this is a great pick. And you know, this other pick, I'm not comparison. I'm not comparing a point six. I'm not making a comparison to a point six seven because I feel that the glow pick is the comparison, and they're the same brand. They're just radically different for some reason. So these two are like kind of together, if that explains that. Anyways, moving forward, we're going to take a brain. And this is one of the newer ones that I do not like these. I will say that right off the bat. Um, they're just not near as good as the, the Dunlops. Um, so this is the 0 .60. We're going to be comparing that with the, uh, the gray Dunlop 0 .60, which in many's opinion is the greatest pick ever made. complaint and that's why I quit using brains is because I'm that maybe I don't know if it's me but I feel like you gotta really like hank into it just to get a triplet to to get your triplet to sound good or it's just really I feel like these picks something that they did with them they, they feel better I mean they're more flexible but something that they did with these picks made that wrap around so much harder to reach where you can like get that that feel Whereas like a 0 .60 Jim Dunlop gray, like a standard nylon. Um, the uh, Fat Mike of No Effects uh, pick, basically, he's used it on his bass. the great feel which the brain pick sounds amazing like if you were screaming something i think the brain pick would be just fine but being that particular something about the nature of uh the irish tenor banjo the jim dunlop 0 0.60 is just money so this is a must-have must include gotta have it can't live without it need them got them need them got them get those picks get them now and I wouldn't mess around as cool as the pink Fat Mike one is. I was going to pick up a few at like $1.19 a piece. But just knowing with like how our pick companies are, this glow pick is so radically different from the pick that is the same, basically the same pick. It should be the same. That different plastic, different color. Don't just get the gray pick if you want one. Get one of these. Not that you don't shouldn't support Fat Mike because he's awesome and no effects is great. 
However, I would recommend just a gray one to start and then buy some fat mic ones and see if you like them. Because I do notice with pick plastic, um, there is a difference. So now we're going to look at the 0.73s. And we're going to start out with one that is not a 0.73, it's a 0.75. And now this is a more expensive pick. This is going to be like one of your vintage Herco picks. Um, so this is a nylon Herco pick. These are the British Invasion, um, favorite pick of the British Invasion. And I can tell you right now, nylon technology has come a long way. Because this pick, um, about 0.75 I think is what I... It's not a 0.73. It is stiff as the Dickens. I got a 0.88 somewhere that is not half as stiff. So that being said, I'm guessing I won't like this, but we're gonna try it anyways. This is my first time trying this pick, so. beyond guitar playing which maybe for a certain type of I honestly feel like an electric guitar I think ah, yeah for like some kind of a like soloist electric guitar this would probably be a great pick but for tenor banjo it is not a great pick so this one I say forget about it you don't want it you do not want a Herco pick um, I can't speak for those re-released gold ones that is a old school Herco. Um, moving along, we're going to look at the Brain 0.73. Now this is a new run of these, which I will say are not as stiff in the same way as the old ones. The grip is a little bit different. People say no, they're not. But then I look at older ones that I used to use um, before I traverse back to Dunlops, and they are not. So we will go ahead and... picks I used to know. They, something is different there. So we're going to move along to the 0.73 Jim Dunlop pick. So this would be the heavier end of picks you're going to be using in tenor banjo. And uh Thank you. 
back to this one again. Yeah, this one uh, feels very jaggy on the strings, like, and uh, even worn in, you know, like, they feel so different from the old ones, and I see different looking ones sometimes, where the, uh, the old ones had, like, a straight bar here, not, like, dots indented. Like, see how those are dots? The ones I used to use had, like, a bar. It was, like, just, like, a little raised line there, raised line there, like that, not those raised dots. And they feel different. And the Jim Dunlop, um, it's a heavier pick, um, and they take a little warming up, as you hear. Like, it's very cold. It was sitting on a table, so I picked it up. It's a little, a little hard. All the attributes of uh, the the lighter pick, and then like a little more attack. So I'd say going through the nylon, I'll show you guys what I use. So a lot of the time for a lighter pick, I go with a 0.53, and this is going to be for slower songs. Softer songs, songs where I'm going to be more like raking. Where you rake across so you don't have like such a hard edge. Um, so I'm going to use that. And this, these are typically going to be recording if I'm being respectful to a softer sounding instrument. Um, a acquaintance of mine has a violin that has a, it's like a Baroque style. It has a, they don't tune it flat pitch necessarily. But it does use like a, the strings are um, like a Nile gut. So to s not overpower, these are good. And in the colder weather, anytime it's not summertime, these are just fine. And I love them. Um, they have enough like of that and they have enough flex. But then right here, the 0.73 and the 0.67. That's where I get that little bit of, uh, particularly this one right here, this 0.67. I love this. It has that little glassier tone, but then it has the flex. It has all the abilities of all of the picks. So to me, this 0.67 is my quintessential. As much as I love the 0.73, because it reminds me of the old brain picks I used to use after I quit using these and started using brain picks when I was younger because the brain picks were red and I thought that was cool and red and uh anyways so I'm back on that but even more than that I use this because I love just the feel of this it has that cat tongue um, feel to it I love the flex it has all of the attributes it has the attributes of this lighter one it has the flex and give of the 0 0.60 lighter gray, but then it has that snap and that little bit of heavier. It has it all. So universally, those three picks that I just showed you go into this one. So these three here, right? Um, as you see, these three, this seems to have like the attributes of all of them, but we don't need all those attributes all the time, right? So sometimes it's okay to use one or the other where it would be needed by like reading the room as it were. And in most instances, if you're inside of a building and it's like 60 degrees, I know I'm weird, right? This pick will do you good. Or the 0.53 is even good too. these and these are what I use all the time um, and what's good is they don't they're not so radically different from each other and uh, it's a subtle difference 
And those are my violin bows. Um, and these are them. And uh, it was a hard thing to go back from using, as you see, I got these little tins everywhere. And I feel badly, but I just do not like the snarling dogs anymore. So I'm sorry to say, man, I just don't like them anymore. Food for thought, though. Um, two picks I'd highly recommend to beginners right here. Can't go wrong with those. Um, the other pick being that Tortex 0.50, the red Tortex. So we'll do a little review real quick just to show it again. I'm out of there, Junior. I, of course, I spilled everything all over. Just perfect. Right there. Anybody getting into these Plectrum banjos, that is a must-have. Unless you're like me and you just want that one. So either of these beginning tenor banjo players, that's it right there. Must-haves.